Hello everyone. As you probably are aware, I have mentioned before on this channel that I have a new book coming out called Victorian Southwest Michigan True Crime. And what I thought I would do today is tell you one of the stories of a man named Old Stark and tell you the story surrounding him. And yes, it is a true crime story with a very sad ending. And it happened right here in Battle Creek, Michigan. And it is an important part of history. And in telling the story, I want to tell you a little bit of the history of that time period and also the early history of one of the most fascinating hotels that ever existed in Battle Creek. So come along and join me. The story I'm about to tell you occurred in the early pioneer era of Battle Creek. Before I begin telling you the story today, I wanted to let you know that this story in its full details is going to be in my book that is coming out on March 11th, 2024, entitled Victorian Southwest Michigan True Crime. And the chapter which covers the story is called The Rise and Fall of Old Stark, 1857. If you'd like to pre-order the book, you can go to my website at michaeldelaware.com and place your pre-order right now, and I will send you a signed copy upon the book's release. Our story begins with the earliest and most iconic hotel ever built in Battle Creek. It was known in the day as the Battle Creek House. The hotel was built in 1837 by a man named Leonard Starkweather Sr., he built the hotel on a lot that he purchased from Sands McCamley in 1837, although I would have found some other references that indicate he may have purchased it as early as 1835. He built the hotel around 1838, and it was located at the central intersection of the old downtown, where today Capitol Avenue and Michigan Avenue cross. Back then, Michigan Avenue was known as Main Street, and Capitol was known as Jefferson Avenue. Verandas ran around the entire building facing each street on the first and second floors. On the corner of Main Street was the office, and also on the Main Street side was a sitting room. On the Jefferson Street side was the dining room, and on the second floor above was the dance hall. The rest of the building was dedicated to rooms to rent to the wary traveler. Leonard Starkweather had arrived in Battle Creek in 1835 with his wife Esther Brewster and his son and three daughters. He purchased 240 acres of land just north of Gokwak Lake. Esther passed away in September of 1836, shortly after he had built the hotel in downtown. But in 1839, Leonard Sr. married again to Sally Toland, the 38-year-old daughter of a Canadian named Isaac Toland, who had built one of the first cabins in the area in 1831. That cabin also served as one of the early taverns. Together with Sally, they would have twin sons. One of their sons would die at birth, John, and the other passed away at two years old, and that was James. They later had a third son named Henry Clay, who drowned in June of 1850 in the Battle Creek River at age five. It's said that every year on the anniversary of his son's death, Leonard Starkweather would venture over to the bridge where his boy had been found after being in the water for six hours. He would look out over the river and speak with his son until grief overtook him, and then he would return home by way of the tavern. Such was the tragedy in Leonard Starkweather's life, and it would continue as two of his daughters from his first marriage with Esther would also die of illness, Hannah at age 22 in 1844, and Lucia at age 35 in 1853. His other two children had moved away from the Battle Creek area. Leonard Jr. had established a farm over in Iowa, and his daughter Lucinda had married and moved away to Galesburg. After Henry Clay had passed away, Leonard and Sally still wanted to raise a young son. So they adopted a two-year-old orphan named John in 1851. Over the decades, the Battle Creek House was a prominent fixture at the center of social activities within the community. There's a lot of stories surrounding the history of the Battle Creek House in Battle Creek. After the election in 1850, a bonfire was held at the crossroads outside of the intersection, and the balcony was used to deliver speeches where people gathered in the street. The famous abolitionist Horace Greeley in 1854 
traveled to Battle Creek and stayed at the Battle Creek house and delivered speeches at the Methodist Church in Battle Creek. And as the hotel prospered, Leonard Starkweather became known fondly among the members of the community as Old Stark. He was described as an excitable man who often spoke with a lot of hand gestures while he was trying to illustrate a point. He was known to be passionate about only a few subjects, mainly those surrounding religion and politics. Otherwise, he was regarded fondly as an amiable citizen. The Battle Creek House became the primary location where the townsmen congregated to talk about the weather, crops, and in later years, the progress of the American Civil War. On winter evenings, they hosted dances and oyster suppers, magic lantern shows and other entertainments, and all of these shows followed with a dance in the dance hall. And the Battle Creek House was the main stagecoach stop between Detroit and Chicago when traveling along the Territorial Road. And from there, heading west, the line of the stages continued on to either Grand Rapids, Hastings, Kalamazoo, and sometimes they traveled south to Coldwater. While Leonard Starkweather remained the owner of the building for many years of its existence, he employed landlords to run the operations day to day for him. And although there are many other stories detailed in my book about the history of the Battle Creek House in this chapter, the respectable and nostalgic reputation of Old Stark came to an end within the community on Friday, December 11th, 1857. On that winter evening, the tempest caged within him that heretofore had seldom emerged erupted into an unbridled rage, and this was the night he brutally murdered his wife. This murder came as a tremendous shock to the community and quite an outrage as everybody knew Old Stark and his wife Sally. The two had a long, quarrelsome relationship, and the incident took place in their home, which was now serving as a boarding house on the corner of South Division Street and Lydia Street. That neighborhood no longer exists today, having been demolished when they built I-194, or the Penetrator. In 1857, Leonard and Sally lived with their adopted son, who was now eight years old. Sally also had a daughter, aged 25, Eliza, from a previous marriage. Eliza had been just a young girl when her mother, Sally, had married Leonard. When Eliza was 17 years old, she married William Laughhead, who died four years into her marriage. She had been living on her own for the past three years, not far from her parents' house on Lydia Street. The Starkweathers had three rooms rented out to boarders, a much smaller scale operation than the previous day-to-day -day operations of the Battle Creek House. On the day of the incident, Eliza had been over having tea with her mother, and Sally had complained of not feeling well, but she did not want to send for a physician. She mentioned that she still had housework to do and desired to just stay home and work on that. After they had their tea, Eliza went over to visit a neighbor, Miss Harriet Snow. On her way out, she observed that Leonard was sitting over by himself, brooding near the fireplace. At 9 o'clock that evening, a neighbor came to Mrs. Snow's and alerted Eliza that there was an incident happening over at the Starkweather house, and she needed to come quickly. When she arrived at the house, she found John, the 8-year-old boy, sitting at a table, and... Mr. Starkweather was coming out of her mother's bedroom. Through the doorway behind, she could see her mother lying on the floor, with her face covered with blood, and there was a flickering candlelight coming from the room. She immediately turned around and ran back out into the street and hollered out murder, calling for neighbors to come to assist. After she successfully alerted a few neighbors, she collected herself and turned around and went back in to assess the condition of her mother. Entering the bedroom, she observed that her mother was lying on the floor with her feet under the stove. Initially, she didn't see the club, but this was later found to be lying on the floor just a few feet away in the shadows. This club was later defined as a baseball bat, and this had been a bat that little John had chosen out of the woods with some friends, and it was a very straight piece of lumber, and his father... Leonard was helping him carve into a baseball bat, and it was one of these little forgotten projects that had been left behind in one of the closets of the room, and somehow this was used as the murder weapon on the evening. While Eliza was standing and assessing her mother, 
Mr. Starkweather was saying over her shoulder, Eliza, I have killed your mother over and over again. And this was a phrase that he would repeat a lot during that evening. Saying nothing in reply to Leonard, Eliza left the house again and went across to Mrs. Snow's. She sent word to the village constable to come as quickly as he could and also sent John to go get a doctor. And I put a lot of detail into this story in the book, which covers the whole events of that evening. And I'm not going to go into every bit of it here in this video, but essentially Sally and Leonard had quarreled. They had had issues with their marriage for quite a while. They were no longer sleeping in the same bed at this time. And Leonard had gone into Sally's bedroom where she stayed with little John who had a bed that slid under hers during the day and they would pull it out at night for John to sleep there. And they were getting ready for bed and then Leonard came in and was essentially implying that he wanted to uh, have a little bit of fun, you might say. And she rejected his advances and he got angry and reached into the closet and beat her up with this club. She lived for a little while, especially during the time that Eliza was there. The mother was alive still on the floor when she sent for the doctor. Little John had tried to revive his mother by throwing a bucket of water on her after Leonard had left the room. And by the time the doctor had arrived, Sally had passed away. The doctor that they summoned was Dr. Simeon French. And if you read through this book that I've got coming out, you'll find that Simeon French was there at several of the murders, uh, assessing or taking care of the patients. And there are several other doctors that are consistent throughout the different stories of this time period. Uh, additionally, another interesting character that shows up in this particular story is Ogden Green. He was serving as the village constable. If you followed my video channel here for a while, you may remember a video I did on Ogden Green. He's best known for being a long-term sextant at Oak Hill Cemetery, and he had buried over 2,000 people in his day. So he was, in addition to serving as the sextant at Oak Hill Cemetery, he was serving for a period of time as the village constable in Battle Creek. And ultimately, Ogden Green arrested Leonard Starkweather, and following the investigation, he was charged with murder. He had representation from Leonidas Dibble, who is another famous figure from the Battle Creek history, a famous attorney who else also helped found the Peninsula Railroad in Battle Creek. So Leonidas Dibble co-defended Leonard Starkweather along with another well-known historical attorney from Marshall, John Van Armen. And in the trial, they managed to get the charges reduced to manslaughter, and Leonard Starkweather was sent to prison for eight years following his conviction. In those days, the manslaughter charge was only about eight years. If you misbehaved in prison, I think it was a couple of years longer. And if it was first-degree murder, it was typically life. And this was in 1857. After Leonard Starkweather went to prison, the Battle Creek House was bought in foreclosure by William Brooks, who was the former mayor of Battle Creek and also a merchant in the town. In later years, it was sold to other investors, and it continued on serving as a stagecoach stop for almost another full decade. Finally, as the village had changed in its architecture over the years, putting up more brick buildings, the old wooden Battle Creek House began to appear more and more dilapidated in contrast to the more modern buildings, and it was often regarded as a relic of old pioneer days, and many considered it a blight on the old downtown district. And the hotel was finally vacated by the last landlord, William Page, in 1866. And the people of the town so rejoiced at that night that they ran through the old tavern and held a jubilee, marching about the different rooms, hopping upon the bar tops, and romping around the dance hall. They were singing and blowing horns and having a general big-time celebration. Three months later, the Battle Creek House was totally destroyed by a fire on a Saturday night, May 5th, 1866. And in those days, the volunteer fire department consisted of steamer Union Engine Number 1 and Tempest Hand Engine Number 2. Each was a hose cart, and there were no horses to pull the steamer at that time. It was hauled by men with drag ropes. 
and people stood around generally glad to see the old building burn down, and many of them tried to stop the fire chief from having the uh, fire put out, and there was this big ruckus that occurred over it, um, which I describe a little bit in the book about it. But uh, essentially, the building was a tinderbox, and it burned to the ground that May evening in 1866. And gone not only was the legacy and the history of the old Battle Creek House, but the last memories of old Stark within the community. Interestingly enough, Leonard Starkweather, after he left prison, went to live with his son in Iowa, and he died in February of 1866, just a few months before the burning of the Battle Creek House. And at Oak Hill Cemetery... He is buried between his first wife, Esther, and the second wife, Sally, who he murdered, which is not something that you normally see. And that's a quick summary of the story of old Stark and the murder that happened in 1857. To read the full story, get a copy of my upcoming book, Victorian Southwest Michigan True Crime. You can order a copy today on my website, michaeldelaware.com. And if you do, I will send you a signed copy. I believe the story of Old Stark is somewhat of an interesting one because here you have this man who was a prominent, well-known figure in the community and helped establish the first hotel. And at the same time, his own personal life was so tragic and he totally destroyed his own reputation through his inability to get along with his second wife. So thus I decided to call that chapter The Rise and Fall of Old Stark because it's mixed with some important historical beginnings for the community at the same time this tremendous tragedy which resulted in the loss of a life plus all of the other tragedy in the man's life. Just made for a very interesting story. So that is the story of Old Stark and Leonard Starkweather was an early pioneer. He created the first hotel in Battle Creek, as I mentioned in this story. Very sad ending for him and his wife and the whole situation. And certainly he did a horrible crime. And it's a very strange story in a lot of ways, as I mentioned in the in the storyline, as you can see. But it is something that happened in history, but I hope you gained a little bit of understanding about the Battle Creek House and how important it was to the early settlement of the period of especially the village of Battle Creek. And if you'd like to get a copy of my new book that is coming out on March 11th, 2024, Victorian Southwest Michigan True Crime, you can pre-order the book right now on my website, michaeldelaware.com, and I hope that you will do so. There are 17 stories in there. Each of them have their own fascinating context to the region and the period itself. And I hope that uh, if you enjoyed today's video, it'll take a minute to hit the like button down there, subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so, and share the video with others. And until next time, thanks for watching.